I'm here at the new construction site of the new Mills Auditorium Edition, our new convention center. I'm here with Dave Perella. He's the director of tourism, and he's going to tell us what's going on here. Dave, thanks for being with us. Thank you. It's good to be here, Mike. What a good-looking construction site. Tell us what's going on. Well, right now we're doing a lot of excavation, or I should say our general contractor, Johnson & Gallion, is. We're, uh, they're removing the uh, dirt and rocks to be able to build the driveway that will, uh, in the end, service the loading dock. It, it, uh, starts adjacent to the church and goes down under the new building. So that's that's the main effort right now. Like you said earlier, a lot of times people, especially uh, people living in Gatlinburg, have driven by and it looks like not a whole lot's being done outside of the demolition. And you just took me in the back and it's a lot that's been done. Yeah, they're down, uh, they've dug down about 20 feet um, deep and about 40 feet wide or 35 feet wide. Uh, they're got a shoring company in here that's uh, shoring up the walls as we go down. That's That'll be a temporary shoring um, as a prelude to being able to build the permanent walls for the driveway. Uh, the, the entire driveway is scheduled to be done, uh, or the walls, uh, mid-November, uh, with, with it being able to be used about mid-February of uh, 2005. Dave, sort of walk us through the building a little bit. I know we have like the auditorium that we kept. What's going to be in this front area out here? Well, probably about 15 feet back from where we're standing is where the entry doors will be to the new facility. Uh, beyond that, there's another 35 to 40 feet of public space uh, as, as kind of a pre-function area for groups that are coming into the building. And then the next part of the structure is where the main, the new ballroom will be, which is a little bit over 17,000 square feet. Uh, it will seat uh, approximately 1,800 people theater style, probably about 1,400 for dinner. So what are we getting in this building that we didn't have in the other? Well, number one, we're getting the ballroom, which is going to be a tremendous help for us. Uh, we're adding a, a very upscale boardroom which will have a lot of built-in technology. Uh, we're, we're actually seeing if we can uh, fit video conferencing, a video conferencing system into the budget of that. Um, we're redoing the Mills Auditorium, which will make it a lot more uh, functional for groups in the city. Uh, we're adding a temporary, or I shouldn't say a temporary, we're adding a, uh, a prep kitchen uh, to the back of the house and between the storage space that will be where the current driveway is and the storage space that's behind the new facility, about seven or 8,000 square feet of much needed storage space for the facility. So David, do you see that we're gonna be able to expand our existing conventions or be able to do maybe multiple conventions at the same time? Well, I think it's a combination of both and, and you know, we're, we're working on a, uh, a working document right now to be able to evaluate the economic uh, value of a group to the city of Gatlinburg, which is, is really what is the most important thing to us is it's not necessarily having something going on in the building, but it's having something going on in the building that actually benefits the businesses in the community, whether it be lodging, restaurants, the shops, the attractions. So our, our key right now is to evaluate the existing bu business, determine what business has the potential for a greater economic impact if we uh, allow them into the new facility, or to determine if they don't, whether we should then go solicit another group to come in uh, that would again drive, drive, drive a greater number of people in the community. So it's, it's kind of a, a it's, it's not necessarily a cut and dry issue. It's, it's something that we really need to look at what the impact is and evaluate each group on its own merit and its potential for growth in the future. David, when do you think this will be finished? Well, um, I know it'll be finished on March 15, 2006. <laughs> I understand you've got a group coming in right after that. Yes, we do. We have uh, the Southeast uh, Botanist Association uh, about a thousand people and they're actually going to be using the, all of the new facility and all of the existing facility for a four-day period um, and speaking with our general contractor we all feel pretty comfortable that 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 date will be uh, will be on time uh, and and 
we feel after seeing the uh, the cost that we will be on budget. So you know that that's for us is good news. I mean we we looked at the pricing of this project in 2000, realizing that we wouldn't be able to build it for about three to four years, and uh, we're gonna the the budget for the project that uh, the Public Building Authority will be signing off on, the guaranteed maximum price, is, uh, is within the guidelines that, the financial guidelines that we had initially set up uh, four years ago. So we're, we're excited about that. We've, uh, you know, we, we think overall the facility is gonna add a lot to the community. The sales department has been getting a lot of inquiries as we now have a new promotional piece that we're using in sales that actually features the new space. And they've been getting a lot of interest from groups uh, to use the space, and, and we've already had some successful bookings. Tell me a little bit about our uh, food service in here. Is the existing kitchen going to be adequate, or are you going to have to do an addition to it? Well, the existing kitchen uh, was designed to do uh, about three to 4,000 meals at a time. What we're adding, because of the logistics of the building uh, and, and the way that service is going to have to happen to the new facilities in that we had to bring it around the back, uh, we added what, what we call a prep kitchen, which allows for the main parts of the meal, the entrees and things, to be prepared in the main kitchen, wheeled over in, uh, in rolling ovens, plugged into the wall to finish, and then all the plate up, all the plating up will be done in the new prep kitchen, as well as all the all the china glass silverware will be cleaned on this side of the building and stored on this side of the building. So it's it's really a nice setup because the the, the new kitchen, it's a small kitchen, but it's a very efficient kitchen for, for what it's designed for. It allows for uh, rolling uh, what they call speed racks with with a few hundred salads on them to be rolled right into a refrigerated box or desserts. You know, so it's everything in the new kitchen with the exception of the dishwasher is on wheels. Uh, it moves it around pretty good. It allows us to do some finishing of items in it uh, before they're plated up. So we're excited. We think it's gonna make the service to the new areas, the ballroom and to Mills Auditorium very effective and very efficient, as well as the public space, we've allocated uh, we've a lot of access to the back of the house to be able to service re uh, receptions in the public areas of the building, you know, without having to wheel a lot of things across mm -hmm. the public space. So it's, it, um, SRA, Mike Smelser has done a great job with the positioning, the actual footprint of the new building and positioning it so that it's functional um, and 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 you know I think I, I think it's exactly what we we need and what we have needed. And being in budget and on time, that's that's hard to beat. Tell me about the interior design. Well, um, as as we stated, as we were moving uh, into the project, and you know when we talked to the community about it on numerous occasions, we felt that it was important that we keep some of of the uh, historic elements of Mills Auditorium. Uh, and bring those into the new building. Uh, and, and, and probably the biggest point uh, that will be made by that is the fact that we salvaged over 10,000 square feet of stone from the Mills Auditorium building uh, to be used both interior and exterior finishes on the, on the new building. Um, but the building is... is Excuse uh, me, but that was a big cost savings too, wasn't it? Yeah, it saved us about $75,000 in total from having to purchase new stone. And, and the quality of the stone that we took off the building is a lot better quality and has a lot more natural look to it than the, the stone that you can get today, which is, is at a much higher price. But um, the, the interiors uh, have a, are, are oriented towards uh, an arts, in, uh, arts and crafts design. Um, there's a lot of wood, woodwork in the building. Um, the, the colors are earth tone. The carpet designs are very large pattern designs that will fit into the, the large spaces that are, are being constructed. Um, ceilings with a lot of different heights, uh, some natural light coming in 
to the public space, but it's it's almost it's not a direct natural light. It's an indirect um, that will come into some of the higher ceiling areas. So it's it's really going to be a beautiful building when it's when it's completed. It's it's uh, this is such an exciting project for for me. I, I'm just grateful that I can be involved in it because it's um, it's going to be uh, fun and interesting as we complete the project and, and the community is going to be able to see what the architect and the interior designer uh, uh, envisioned and, and when they when they see it and are able to stand in it they're uh, I just think everybody's going to be really proud of this new facility and 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 it's the type of a building that fits the the mountainous area that we're in you know it's kind of it'll look like the building is kind of nestled into the mountains which is is pretty pretty neat it'll be a, a definite good improvement to the to the city and it's going to really help us in this very competitive convention market sure sure and let's uh change subjects for a second i know you're the director of tourism you're also the director of marketing Tell us uh, some of the new marketing things we're doing. I know people are really interested in that for the uh, uh, future advertising of the city. Yeah, it's you know it's been an interesting year, and and when the uh, board of commissioners uh, enacted the amusement tax and, and dedicated uh, half of that tax to the department for marketing, did that help? Uh, tremendously. What it what it really allowed us to do was to 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 look at our overall campaign. Um, in pieces and, 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 and look at what the best thing for the city would be for overall for marketing the city um, and then it, it, the end result is it's allowed us to add some components that we, we weren't able to afford before and I think um, one of the components that, that, that I'm excited about uh, is an agreement that we've reached with Geiger and Associates. Um, Geiger and Associates is they they have have one purpose as a business, and that is to uh, put together uh, press tours for mainly cities and counties. Um, How they, do they do that? Well, you know the 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 principal in the company, Debbie Geiger, uh, for for years worked for the Florida um, Tourism Development. And uh, she left there about 19 years ago and started her own company. She was the PR director there, so she brought a lot of those contacts. Um, <clears throat> and, and what they do is, is, with this agreement, they put together a program, uh, an itinerary for, for say, a, a travel writer for different publications. It could be Southern Living, um, it could be, uh, oh, the Cincinnati Enquirer and they'll bring those people into the community for in, in in this case our first group comes in November 3rd which is a Wednesday and leaves on that following Sunday and they take them around to different areas that they're interested in and hopefully the end result is that we get editorial copy in, in the publications that they write for mag whether it be magazines newspapers um, and, and we we feel that uh, right now there's such a push on for for tourism destinations or and, and more than that a lot of companies with strictly uh, commercial advertising uh, third-party editorial copy can have a whole lot more impact it sure does uh, and and so we we feel this is a, a, a gonna be a great asset for the community as we begin to to identify the assets that are specifically Gatlinburg assets that we need to be showing and telling our story about to potential visitors. So that's an exciting program. As I said, our first press tour, uh, we have about 20 uh, travel riders coming in on the 3rd of November, which coincides with Chili Cook-Off and Winterfest kickoff. Uh, and then we have another one scheduled for May of 2005. So that's that's a uh, one program that we have that's new. Another one um, about three weeks ago, we just finished filming the first segment uh, of a 30-minute television program for Turner South called Three Day Weekend. Uh, the the segment that we we just finished uh, filming 
uh, features a family. Uh, the, the family that, that is featured in it is actually from uh, Hilton Head, South Carolina, uh, mom and dad and two children. Uh, and they spent three days here with the film crew and the film crew followed them around to the different attractions and to the different restaurants and the lodging facility that they were staying in. And then that will get composited and air as a 30 minute television program, probably beginning in February. Uh, we have another one scheduled, a similar program scheduled for the 15th of October, which will feature a uh, uh, active senior couple. Um, we've already chosen uh, chosen them, and it's the same scenario. They, we've we've got a, a kind of loose itinerary set up for them, and the film crew will again follow them around for the entire you know for their three day stay and composite that into a 30 minute program. So they'll be airing from time to time, which will give us a lot of good exposure uh, for Gatlinburg. The the interesting thing. Uh, when we, when we looked at what, what we wanted to show, we, we went a little bit beyond the obvious. We, we kind of, you know, for, for the last year, as we've been putting together our marketing plan, we've talked about these hidden nuggets that we have, Motor, Motor Nature Trail being one of them. The, uh, uh, the Sugarlands Welcome Center with the museum area. Mm -hmm. and, and so we've kind of added some of those things that a lot of people don't know about, and, and now they will see them uh, and, and they're not they're not expensive things to do. It's it's something that we can give that really shows our area well, and and it's and it'll be interesting for the people seeing them. So, um, you know, we're excited about those programs. Now, I've heard you've got a couple new TV spots. I've heard people around town talking about it's got maybe a, a bear in it. Yeah, tell yeah. us about that. Well, the the new concept. Uh, does have a bear. It features a bear as a tour guide of Gatlinburg, <laughs> and it's it's kind of a cute concept. It's something that we had actually discussed three or four years ago, and and we weren't sure that we could pull off the concept in a way that would show the community in a good light. And and we've worked on it kind of on and off for a couple of years, and and rose again out of the ashes. Uh, this winter we started talking, this past winter we started talking about it in earnest, and we just shot the commercials this past week. Uh, we're in the edit stage now, um, and, and we're actually going to uh, present it to the community at the Chamber of Commerce Banquet this year. All right. Uh, with the bear. All right. Uh, the bear will be there. <laughs> uh, the bear remains nameless at this point. Um, We've, we've got some ideas, but we also have some ideas about a promotional opportunity to name the bear. So uh, it's, it's, an interesting, it's an interesting concept because we can bring the businesses and the community into it. And that's what we're developing now over the next few months. We're developing some ways that, that the lodging facilities um, can can kind of use this concept in their advertising or or any of the retail businesses or, or the attractions um, just to make it um, what people think about um, when they think about Gatlinburg you know ad advertising right right now with the amount of advertising that's on the air with TiVo and all those other uh, the, the technology updates you really have to have commercials that can cut through the clutter of all the commercials. The, the viewing of the rough cuts of these commercials and the people who have seen them all pretty much feel that people are going to talk about <laughs> the bear in the Gatlinburg commercials. Um, we, we, we think we've hit on something really good and we're, we're excited to, to uh, be able to show it to the community again at the Chamber Banquet this, uh, this coming November. So people need to take note of that and make sure they get their tickets for the Chamber Banquet. Yeah, yeah, this is, this is a don't miss. Very good. I, it's, uh, they, uh, the bear has, has a little bit of wit to him, you know, he, uh, we don't want a dumb bear by any chance. Right. And, and, and he, he, he has fun with it. Um, we, we had a great person in the bear costume when we shot him. And in fact, the days that we filmed the commercials, 
Uh, I spoke to Jim Renfro with the National Park a few days later. He said our visibility for those days was close to 200 miles. It's beautiful. So we had just picture perfect days to do it uh, and uh, had a great crew, had a, had a great film crew and, and the Tombrus folks did a great job uh, our creative team pulling this concept together. Well, Dave, it sounds like a lot of exciting things in the future for Gatlinburg. A brand new convention center, be, the addition being built, which is yep. exciting, and this new marketing looks like good things ahead for Gatlinburg. You know, I think so, and I think the economy is is uh, slowly, uh, slowly turning. I think there was, uh, I think some some folks jumped the gun probably six months ago, thinking that it was fixed, but. I think it's coming around, and I, th I think people are 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 now uh, moving again. It looks like like that. You know, they've gotten past the shock. We've got the election coming up, which pre-election we've always uh, had a little bit of a soft year right. during a presidential election year. So hopefully, as as uh, as we hail in two, 2005 from the uh, fireworks display on top of the Space Needle. Uh, we'll hail in a good economic year for Gatlinburg. I think we will. And as the building progresses, can we come back and, and do this again so we can wear these hats again? Yeah, yeah, we love these hats. <laughs> Thank you, David. Absolutely. Good to see you. You too. Thanks.